In this video, I'm gonna show you how to achieve ramped slow-mo just like this in Adobe After Effects as quickly and as efficiently as I possibly can. So before we do that, let's first show you and define what ramped slow-mo actually is. To do that, we're gonna open the graph editor here in Adobe After Effects, to which we're greeted with a visual representation of the playback speed of our clip in this white line. We can see here that before our literal ramp, we have a perfectly straight horizontal line, and then after our ramp, we have one as well. These are at one second per second, just meaning they are at real time. Then when it comes to our ramp, we have a curvature downward away from real time going to 0.2 seconds per second, essentially meaning that it is slower than real time. And then we also have a curvature upward back to real time from that, basically meaning we have ramped slow-mo on this clip. Now, how do we actually achieve this effect? Well, first we're gonna close this project and show you how to get to your own new project. I'm gonna show you this first using the dynamic link between Premiere and Adobe After Effects. This is simply done just by having a sequence that we're editing and a clip in it that we want to add slow motion to. All we have to do is right click on it, find, replace with After Effects composition and click it. It's gonna automatically open After Effects if it isn't already and prompt you to save a project file. I always recommend doing this in the same place as your Premiere project so everything is always together. We're gonna to call it Slow Mo 2 and it's gonna open this and it's gonna automatically make a new composition using the clip that we have in Adobe Premiere. Super simple, it's gonna keep our same start and end points of the clip as well as any effects that we might have added to it in Premiere such as like Lumetri color or anything like that in the settings that we designated of those. So in order to actually do this, if we're not gonna have a Premiere project, all we have to do is open After Effects and click File, New Project, and it's gonna bring up an empty window here. We bring our clip in, same clip, we right click on it, we click New Comp from Selection. This is gonna make a new composition that is the full length of the clip that we chose. So we are gonna to have to choose our starting and ending points of the clip itself. But other than that is the exact same process from here to do our ramp slow-mo. And the first thing that I do from here is go to the effects controls and reset the audio levels because for whatever reason, when I do this, they come in at 35.57%. So from there, we're ready to add our ramp slow-mo. The first step in the process is to click on our composition here, go to the composition menu and click composition settings, find duration, and I add 10 seconds to the duration of the composition. This gives us some wiggle room at the end of our composition to adjust our slow motion. Gonna need that in a second. So within our composition, we right click on our file or our clip. We go up to the time menu and click on enable time remapping. This is how you do your ramp slow-mo. From here, I'm gonna click on this button here with a graph in it and says include this property in the graph editor set. Just allows us to edit it in the graph editor. And then from here, we can start adding keyframes. The first one that I always add is at the very end of our clip. So I hold shift, click anywhere in the timeline playhead area and drag to the end of our clip where it magnets to it. I add a keyframe there. Then we can add our keyframes of slow motion where we want it to start and stop. So I want it to start just as he's kicking the bike and I want it to stop just before or as he's catching it. So from here, we can actually add slow motion to our clip, but it won't be ramped yet. How we do this is just by highlighting the second and third keyframes, the one where we want our slow motion to stop and the one at the end of our clip itself. And we drag both of them further away from the first keyframe. The further you go, the slower it gets. So the closer it is, the faster it gets if you wanted to, some, for some reason, speed it up and do ramped fast motion. But we're gonna drag it away here and we can play it back just to see if it's as slow as we want it to be. If it's not, we can adjust it from here. Or if the keyframe is at the wrong point, we can do that from here as well just by undoing a few times to where it gets to the keyframe we want to change. So then from there, how do we actually add the ramp slow-mo? Well, we click the graph editor here to which we're greeted with that visual representation of our playback speed. And we can see that there's no ramping here and that our speed goes from real time to slow motion back to real time. And it does it immediately at those keyframe points. To add the ramp, all we have to do is push and hold shift and click on one of these keyframes at the bottom here. And we drag it up. And we can see that there's these yellow squares that come up now. 
what I always do is I try to align these yellow squares as closely as I possibly can. Then we click off and we click hold shift again and then do the same thing on the other side. So now we have ramp slow-mo. Pretty simple, right? Well, there's also some adjustments that we can do. If we click on one of these keyframes again, you can see this little dot here to the right and to the left. The only one you really wanna mess with is the one on the inside of our ramp here. And if we drag it, I hold shift so that it drags perfectly straight left and right. We can see that dragging it to the right extends how long it takes for our slow motion to start. If we drag it to the left, it makes our slow motion start quicker all the way to the point where it makes a point again. So this is something you can adjust on your own for what your personal preference is. I'm just going to leave it alone because I think it looks just fine the way it is. Now let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting here. So if you didn't make this keyframe at the end of your clip, which we do need to extend the end of our clip to at this point, if we didn't do this, this existing keyframe here or just a non-existing keyframe in here would make it so that this part of our clip right after our slow-mo would not be playing at real time. You can see here everything after the keyframe that we put here is actually faster motion. So this is something that we don't want and why we add that keyframe at the end. What we need to also acknowledge here is if we find through doing this process that these keyframes are at the wrong point, you can't really just add another keyframe in to this and start adjusting things. So if we add another keyframe and then we adjust the length of things and go back to our graph editor here, we can see that it totally messes things up. So you don't wanna do that as well. You're just gonna to wanna to go backwards to the point where you've designated where the slow motion starts and stops and start over from there because it's such a quick and easy process once you have it down, it's no problem to do that. So from here, what do we do? Well, what I do from here is I put the playhead on my last keyframe to get the new length of our composition or new length of our clip. And I click on this area right here that has the time on it. It automatically highlights it. So I copy it from there, just click okay. Go back to our composition settings, go to the duration, highlight it, paste it in, hit okay. It automatically makes this now the exact length with our slow motion added into it. I save it from here, we can go back to Premiere and for some reason within Premiere, it doesn't bring the audio in automatically. But what we do see is that we have this linked composition here that we made. And what I'm going to do is just take out our old one, bring in our new one, and there we go. Slow motion is added, automatically linked. We didn't have to export video or anything like that. And it is now in Premiere in our project in the place of the old clip. So that being said, it's pretty simple, it's pretty fast, and once you have it figured out, you can do it very quickly, and it's a super simple process once you get it all down once. So I hope this helped you. If it did, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, also let me know those in the comments down below, and I hope this was concise and simple enough and efficient enough that it helped you learn this process very smoothly and quickly. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for other BMX-related videos, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow in another video. Goodbye.